Cool. All good. All good. Imagine being in a situation where no matter which direction you go to, you hit a wall. Imagine being in a situation where you find yourself in your room all day, incapable of getting anything done. Imagine being in that situation where your grades are falling and your hopes are dying. How did this come to be, more importantly, how is it affecting you, the college student? My fellow friends, my name is Abu, and I've been dealing with depression for about a year now. With the help of a psychologist, I have been doing research on my own in terms of how to get rid of it. But like many of you already know, and I will emphasize this again, depression isn't something you just get rid of. You don't wake up one day and you take it off like you take off your shirt. It's with you. But there is hope. The sooner you get help, the sooner you get yourself out of that room. Here at Rutgers, I've done a survey amongst the college students. And I've come to realize that about 95% of students either have depression or know someone who does. 95, there were about 100 people in this room. That's 95 of you, in estimate, um, that either have depression or know someone who has depression. But, but that's, that's not what the purpose of my survey was. The purpose of my survey was to see how you guys go and get help. Where do you go? Who do you ask for help? If you're stuck in that room, how do you get out of it? So when I asked that question, who do you go and get help from, I got answers like these. Some said that they get help from their friends. Some said they got help from their parents, rightfully so. And some said that they went to a doctor or a therapist, which is great. But there was an answer that I received multiple times that intrigued me, which was they tend to keep it to themselves, hoping one day it just goes away. Day by day passes, and they hope one day it will be gone. But that's not the case. According to the DSM-5, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the fifth edition, by Dr. Stephanie O'Larry. She, a clinical psychologist, states that if the following, if the following symptoms occur for two weeks periodically or longer, you should seek help. Things like feeling of hopelessness, inability to concentrate, changes in sleep habits, thoughts of death or suicide. But that, that's, that's normal, isn't it? It's normal to have these thoughts. But having these thoughts continuously, that's where it becomes an issue. That's where it's affecting you, the college students, and myself. Tiana Keith, a student at East Carolina University, she says in her study of depression, and the negative effects on college students, according to the Undergraduate Research Journal for the Human Sciences. She says, guilt, a diminishing, and I want to quote this specifically, guilt and a diminishing feeling of self-worth are also recognized with a depressive state. Difficulty with basic memorization and the inability to concentrate results in poor time management. And as college students, that's something we all need to function, time management. But as you can see, with the lack of time management, it ultimately leads to the downfall of any college student. But there is hope, right? There is hope. Hope is what brings us back up. And these are some of the benefits of seeking help as soon as possible. And I want you to notice, every time I click this, and I have a benefit up here, what happens 
to these issues. So this benefit, your mental health improves. There's something that disappeared on the other side. You do it again. You increase your energy and concentration, something else goes away. You do it again, you seek help again, you reduce stress. You all know, it goes away. You keep going. You gain interest in pleasures and hobbies and activities, and something else is out. But the important one, we get better sleep. And as college students, that's something we all need, right? Yeah. But look at that. One by one, the list of issues is gone. It may be there. It's always there. But you've reduced it. You were able to eliminate it. And even if it's temporary, you go back and get help. And that's us after we get help. Um, I do want to say that there is help out there. But where can you go to get professional help? We're college students. You know, we can go to the doctors or the therapists, but who has the time, you know? But thankfully, here at Rutgers, they have some great places, some really good professionals who are willing to help you. But who's going to go to Cook Douglas or Livingston, you know? But that's the thing. They're everywhere. Their offices are everywhere. Every campus has multiple places. But I want to bring you back to that room we were stuck in. If we're stuck in that room, how are we going to go out and help get our self-help in these places? That's another great thing. They have online portals where you can talk to someone online face to face. They have phone call options where you can talk to someone on the phone if you're stuck in these beds or situation or these rooms that you're in. And when you finally get out, go visit them. They have offices. Take a walk. You don't need an appointment, and it can be anonymous if you wish to. Like I said, and I want to end this like this, if there's anything I hope you all get out of this presentation is that there is help out there. It doesn't matter who you go to for help as long as you do, because the sooner you go and get help, the less damage you do to, in, to the performance in your classes, but more importantly, to your well-being. Thank you very much.